this or shall I do this? Well, okay, so we're kind of freaking out a little bit. <laughs> for In all the best ways and for all the best reasons, um, we... Uh, Aubrey, do you want to say something? You're hiding under a blanket. Um, wow. <laughs> You're running. So... <laughs> Okay, so the, we just posted the video with Cody's Lab, and uh, he is a, a much, much, much bigger deal on YouTube than we have been up to this point. So at the beginning of this morning, we had 317 subscribers. It took us a full year to get the first 100 and a few months to get the second 200. But uh, as of right now, you know, a couple hours later, we have 1,084. And every time we hit the refresh button, that number changes. And that's freaking exciting! <laughs> so so we are kind of freaking out a little bit, and we also want to say we're super grateful. Um, yeah. We had a lot of fun. We've had a lot, a lot of fun making all the videos we've made, um, especially the this, this last collab, Going Up and Hunting the Bogwar, was a lot of fun. It was a great adventure. We're so glad that you guys are enjoying it, too. We just think that's so cool. Um, we're really happy. We're really grateful. This is... This is really great. One thing that's worth noting is that the number right here of total views over the lifetime of the channel is about one is about 15,197. Now, the video we just did with Cody's Lab is 1.7 thousand at this point, which means that it is fully 10%, it's actually a little over 10% of the total number of views that we have ever gotten. And that brings up an idea. Do you want to explain Extremist Dan? Sure. So, and uh, this, we also want to mention that, so we've been running this YouTube channel for a year and a bit. A year Closer and a few to months. two. Okay, so almost two years, right? And so one single video represents 10% of our views, and it's like, wow, that's pretty crazy. So this is, this is an idea called Extremist Dan and Mediocre Dan, or the two names for these, these two regions. That Basically, the difference between the two is whether or not the bell curve works. So if you model human height across the entire planet, or human weight, you'll find that there are, is change, there's differences between the people, but if you add up all the, the ages and weights and heights, um, they, they fit, not ages, forgive me for saying that one, but the heights and weights of people, they will fit on a bell curve. So that... Almost all of them are somewhere in the middle, and then there's a few people who are super tall, and a few people who are super short, and almost everyone is somewhere pretty close to the middle. That's mediocre stand, where the bell curve works. Um, extremist stand is a place where basically you have fat tails, right? Is that the right way to say it? Yeah, yeah fat so tails have, is the way they talk about it in economics. So you have, yeah, you have fat tails on the distribution. Basically what that means is um, there's a disproportionate number of people who are way far up and way far down. So you'll have a few people who are... Uh, who have very extreme large numbers of whatever it is that you're measuring, and then other people who have very extreme small numbers of whatever it is that you're mentioning, and not very many people in the middle. An example of this is book sales. So J.K. Rowling sells, you know, billions and billions and billions of copies of, of millions of copies of the Harry Potter books and makes enormous amounts of money and becomes the second richest woman in the world. Or did she, did she take first? First or second. But uh, the vast majority of um, booksellers sell, you know, not all that many copies. And or so, none for the majority of human beings. Like, you haven't sold any books, probably. I haven't sold any books. Most of us have sold zero books. And so the, the distribution isn't like everybody's kind of sitting in the middle for an average. So if you average how much money uh, booksellers make or book writers make, it, it's really disingenuous because the average doesn't tell you anything. It's like three that are selling everything. It's Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, and then the rest is like a bunch of no-names. So if you measure it out as an average, all of us on average make, I don't know, $1,000, $10,000 on book sales. That's the average. But if you actually look at the distribution, that's not how it is. You and I make zero dollars on book sales, and then there's a few people who make a bajillion dollars on book sales. And this actually applies to careers. So in, in acting, most actors are actually waiters who say that they're actors, and then there's a few that make a whole bunch. And then for booksellers, there's another example. YouTubers is another example. These are all things that are in extremist stand where the bell curve doesn't work. However, if you look at plumbers and you look at the income distribution for plumbers, the thing is you kind of have to have like a real plumber in every single house that's there, and so it's not scalable. Scalable careers end up working in extremistan, non-scalable careers end up working in mediocristan, and in mediocristan, the bell curve works, and so it's actually safer because the, the low and middle end of the, the curve end up being like livable. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so... So it's a really cool uh, idea to know because, you know, we talk about averages a lot and it's important to know averages, but the average may or may not really tell you accurately what's going on. And so it's good to know about these two different distributions, these two different ways to measure things, extremist and mediocrity, to know the difference and to know that things that belong to one don't necessarily belong to the other. The advantages of extremistan are that, uh, well, the advantages of mediocristan is like the stability that you're going to be somewhere in the middle of the curve, probably. The advantage of extremistan is that there is a small but significant, there's a small 
uh, probability that you could do really, really, really well, and then a very large probability that you won't. And so most things that involve any sort of art, like music or YouTubing or any of these things, exist in, in Extremistan. They're scalable. And so Jordan Peterson and Nassim Taleb give really good advice, which is don't quit your day job, but do have a hobby that's on YouTube or making music or writing books. One of the interesting things about Extremistan is that many of the activities in Extremistan, if you engage in them, there's a low downside to engaging in those, in those activities. So for instance, uh, oh, I don't know, if you have a, you know, if you have a, if you have a band with your friends, uh, you know, and you just play in the garage, you know, hey, that's fun. It doesn't really cost you that much because you're really enjoying what you're doing. And then there's a small chance that you'll blow up and become a really big deal. Right. So it's good to engage in small risks that have the potential for a, a high payoff, even though there's a low probability, because you don't lose very much if you don't do well, which is probably what's going to happen. But then the potential upside in that uh, very small chance that things do go really well, that potential upside is enormous. So the moral of the story is you want to take lots and lots of small risks. As long as you have a day job that you can rely on for your the map the as long as you're not relying on making it big in order to like pay the rent. Yes. Yeah. So we're excited and thinking about like Nassim Taleb. Nassim Taleb, uh, the book, The Black Swan is incredibly awesome. Link to the description below. But uh, yeah, we're incredibly excited watching these numbers go up. Wait, wait, wait. Should we hit the button again? I'm going to hit the refresh button. Hit the button. <laughs> 184 to refresh right now. Oh, I did hit the button. Oh, no, it's... Oh, 178. Oh, so we just went up by uh, 90, 90 subscribers. Like, boom. Wow. You guys are awesome. Thank you.